Good morning. It's so nice to be with you this morning, knowing that we are all united in heart and mind and spirit as we turn our hearts towards church. I hope you and your family have been well during these challenging days. Let's continue to hold one another up in prayer. This morning we hear from Exodus the 33rd chapter, verses 12 through 23, and it's the story of Moses hiding in the cleft of the rock as God passes by. Let us listen for God's word to us. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way you shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And God said, I will make all of my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Here ends this morning's scripture reading. May God bless it to our understanding. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, in these minutes, open to us the meaning of the scripture also help us to know your presence that dwells within each one of us. Amen. A couple verses from the scripture that you heard this morning in Exodus 33. Show me your glory, Lord, I pray. But God said, you cannot see my face. For no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. What if God said during these days, you will find yourself in the midst of a terrible pandemic, and during these days, you will also find me in the midst of a pandemic? Does that sound paradoxical? Hardly. As people of faith, we can affirm that both are true. 
How could it be any other way? Some people may feel that God is nowhere to be found as, at a time such as this. As the Jesuit priest James Martin notes in a recent New York Times article, he says, even the most religious people ask me, why is this happening? And where is God in all of this? Martin continues, the question is essentially the same one that people ask when a hurricane wipes out hundreds or thousands of lives or when a single child dies of cancer. It is called the problem of suffering, the mystery of evil, or theodicy. And it's a question that saints and theologians have grappled with for millenniums. This was an article that appeared in the New York Times by James Martin entitled, Where is God in a Pandemic? in uh, the edition of March the 22nd of 2020. It is an honest question and one that is difficult, if not impossible, to answer. What people wouldn't give for even a glimpse of God right about now? Personally, I believe that God chose to give up power and control and demonstrated this in the person of Jesus, who came as a suffering servant to show us the true nature of God. But that's another discussion for another time, and a very long discussion at that. You can read more about this line of thought if you're interested in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 6 through 11. It's other places, but uh, it's featured very prominently there in the second chapter of Philippians. Regardless of theological perspective, some people have said that they have felt God in the midst of a pandemic and remarked that they would not have been able to make it through a time such as this without faith that God was in their midst. I've even read a couple blogs where people said, my faith and spirituality has grown more during this time of pandemic than at any other time in my life. My faith and spirituality has grown more in this time of pandemic than at any other time during my life. That's a remarkable statement that I read not long ago. If people have more time and they're using it to read and write and pray and meditate, you can understand perhaps why that would be true. And yet some may not see it. Like a lot of things, it depends on where you look. It's not just that the devil's in the details, as that old aphorism states, but God. God is in the details too. In fact, the presence of God in daily life can surround us in a thousand different ways, yet we may hardly notice. We may be busy. We may be caught up in daily routines or just take things for granted if we don't know where to look or how to look. In today's reading, Moses is worried about many of the same things. He was summoned by God to lead God's people out of captivity. He was worried about who else God might send on this great uh, challenge to accomplish this monumental undertaking. He felt that maybe he couldn't do it all by himself. And he was wondering if, if he would be able to carry out the mission if God didn't send help. Moses proclaimed, and I can imagine him almost yelling at God, maybe even shaking his fist, saying, God, show me your ways. Show me your glory. That's all I need. And then God answered in a different way than Moses was expecting. I suspect that is often the case with us. 
Maybe that's the way most prayers are answered. God said, you know, Moses, no one can look upon my face and live. Every Jewish person knew that in the Old Testament. Imagine the sun magnified a thousand times and you begin to get a sense of God's brilliance. We could not survive. So God said, this is what I'll do for you, Moses. I will be passing by you shortly in all of my glory. There is this rock. Go stand on the rock. And when I pass by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hands and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. We are not told if Moses was disappointed at God's answer. And it doesn't really matter. God put a hand over the face of Moses so he could not see. And after God passed by, Moses was able just to see the, the back of God, perhaps barely a shadow. But it was a glimpse of God. And that's, that's all Moses got, but it must have been all that he needed because we know Moses successfully led God's people out of slavery to the promised land. It was a glimpse, not a full frontal view, not face to face, just a glimpse of God as God passed by. Today, during these troubled times, all we need is a glimpse of God that little bit of reassurance. Let's not get greedy and ask to see God face to face like Moses did. We want answers. We want solutions. We want the pandemic to be over. Mainly we wanna know when all of this is going to end and we can get back to some semblance of normal, although we know it's, it's gonna be a new normal. So we can return to church so we can return to family and friends, return to life, whatever that may look like. We pray for large miracles, but we are granted small miracles. We may only be afforded minutes or moments of revelation. What were we expecting? I don't know how long this experience of Moses lasted, probably not very long, but it was enough. Enough for a lifetime of inspiration and ministry for Moses. And maybe that's all we need too. Maybe that's what we can have today, right now. Like Moses, we may only catch a glimpse of God in the rear view mirror or a faint outline of a divine shadow. But imagine what that could mean. As a brash and wildly naive young man years and years ago, I used to believe and pray for an answer to prayer that would strike like a thunderbolt from the sky. And of course that does not usually happen I prayed for visions and answers that would rival Paul's blinding experience of God on the Damascus Road. But that's not usually how life works. That's not usually how God works. Maybe we should be more focused during these challenging times on just catching a glimpse or a glimmer when God passes by if epiphanies are in short supply. Maybe that's all we get, but maybe that's enough. In fact, I'm certain that would be enough. I would rather look for God with a microscope than a telescope. I think that is where God can be found. But that may be hard for many people, especially during these times when patience and perseverance is in short supply or we try to force God's hand.
hand. Maybe we're looking in all the wrong places. Maybe we're looking too hard. We're looking with the wrong set of spectacles. I'm reminded of what the prophet Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 29. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Perhaps it comes down to what the eyes of our hearts can see and where you look. Moses had to be reminded of how to see, and maybe we do too. I had one profound revelation as an answer to prayer, as I mentioned in last week's message about seeing the vision of my dogs in heaven. <laughs> but usually it's not that, that vivid and that certain. Most of the time it's been more like a magnificent moment or a holy hunch on the inside, or a crack of light coming from under the door into a dark room. More often than not, that's how my prayers are answered and the prayers of many that I know, such as God's language. Sometimes it's like we have to play detective to discover the answer to our question, well, where did that come from? Where is God in that? Rather, most of the time we have to learn to see in a different manner and to hear in a different language, God's language. That's why I think meditation and contemplative prayer are so important, especially during these times. It's not about talking or grasping or forcing God to answer, but being still and sweeping away the distractions long enough to listen for the voice of God within. To listen, to seek God with all of our hearts and minds, and recognizing the faint lines of the nearly invisible when a divine shadow is cast across our path. If we could learn to be more like Moses, maybe we could know where to look for glimpses of God. Our faces would be radiant like the sun, and our most difficult days would be surmountable. If we could catch a glimpse or glimmer of God, we would see that God is always with us, and we wouldn't have to go outside looking for God high and low. When I was young, we used to enjoy making up games when I was just a kid. And one of those games was taking an object or a picture and holding it up in front of others for just a few seconds. A few seconds. And then it was the job of the other players to draw a picture of what they thought, what they remembered that they had seen during those few seconds. And the best players in that game were usually the ones who remembered the most accurately what they saw when they caught just a glimpse of the object. I think it's that way with God a lot of times. I think Moses would have been good at that game. It was probably more of a theological endeavor than my young mind realized when we were playing that game. What do you notice when you're given just a brief glimpse or clue of the divine? What sticks with you and what falls away? That's our job during these days of death and suffering and hardship everywhere. These are hard days and I'm afraid there will be more of them ahead. Yet whatever Moses actually saw, it was enough of God's presence to keep him going, to keep him moving towards the promised land. And isn't that what matters? A cleft in the rock, like a divine shadow, or a tertiary thought, or a glimpse of the beloved in passing. It would be enough. It would be marvelous. 
I'm not sure if Moses and his people would have ever made it to the promised land if he would not have caught a glimpse of God as he was hiding in the cleft of the rock that day. Moses needed that vision like we need that vision today. But it gave him enough strength and courage to carry on, knowing that God would journey with him. The theologian Kierkegaard once said, faith is walking to the edge of all the light you have and taking one more step. Faith is walking to the edge of all the light you can see and taking one more step. Today you may catch a glimpse of God and the kindness of a stranger or the tenacity of a nurse working in a COVID-19 unit or the will of a teacher as she perseveres in order to make sure that her students get everything they need through online learning. Where have you seen a glimpse of God today? It would be a good thing to ponder as you go to bed tonight or have a few moments later in the day. Where would you begin to look for a glimpse of God? Sometimes I think peripheral vision is theological vision. Like Moses, we could not bear the full glory of seeing God face to face. But I believe we can see God reflected in the face of others. In fact, maybe that's the best way to see God reflected in the face of others. It was enough to know that God would be present with Moses as he continued his long journey towards the promised land. I'm not sure Moses would have ever made it if he would not have caught that glimpse of God as he was hiding in the cleft of the rock. Where is your cleft in the rock today where you go to see, to find answers when it comes to the divine? It gave Moses the conviction that God would lead him the rest of the way to the promised land, and in fact, that's what happened. When we catch a glimpse of God, it is enough, I trust, to sustain us and remind us of why we are here and why we will be here tomorrow. Sometimes you may only catch a glimpse of God, but most of the time, that is all you will need. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers together and lift them up as one body, remembering our family members, friends, and loved ones, and certainly our doctors and nurses and uh, first responders. Let us lift all of these people up to God and let us pray. O oh God, that you have made us in the image of your own mystery, thanks be to you that in the soul of every human being there are depths beyond naming and heights greater than knowing. Thanks be to you. Grant us the grace of inner sight this day that we may see you as the self within all selves. Grant us the grace of love this day that amidst the pain and suffering and death that we are going through during these days, that we might find deep within your love and your presence. Grant us but a, a glimpse of you, O oh God, as you pass by. And we trust that it will be enough to sustain us and see us through these days. Be with our healthcare workers, with those who are suffering from the COVID virus, for all of those who have family members or know others who are suffering, 
God, in the midst of their fear, grant them peace. In the midst of their darkness and anxieties, grant them light. In the midst of the pain that we all experience and worry at this time, may we know the richness of your love and grace that lies buried in the human soul. Amen.